So, uh, how are you? Uh, good morning, Vietnam. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's because I was typing uh, good morning uh, on the YouTube interface, you know, going live. And then uh, I, I don't know, I immediately thought about you saying good morning, Vietnam. And, and it was very interesting because, my God, you were the first person to, to remind me of the existence of that film in a long time, in a very, very long time. So it's nice. And, it, and it's, you know, also because uh, I remember Robin Williams, you know, waking up his listeners with, with that, you know, good morning, Vietnam. And it's such a nice message. I, I really, I really liked it. Okay. So listen, today I want to work on something with you uh, that actually you've been doing pretty well with it. Okay. But. Uh, but I saw an example, a real life example, with a native speaker, and I thought, oh, I have to share this with Veronica because I, I think it's going to have a very, it's going to have a very positive impact, okay, on your relationship with the language, which, by the way, is great. Your your relationship with English, especially in the last couple of months, it's been really good. But first thing I would like you to do is this: let's just refresh, okay? Tell me as much as, you know, as much as you can remember, uh, as best as you can remember, the story we've been working on about Daryl Davis and what happened to him. Uh, going, going from the beginning until what we learned last class, until the last part. Okay? Mm-hmm. Mm hmm okay. Mm hmm Okay. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. a remark, perhaps you could use the word remark. He used the word combat, but fight is perfect. <laughs> well, fight works, okay? Okay. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Hatred. Hatred and ignorance. least the, the 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 least ah okay you don't know what mm -hmm. well mm, well he, he used in the beginning of that video two other adjectives effective and successful Right, because in the very beginning he he, had, he, he said the, the and he 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 mentioned that this thing that you're about I'm not I don't want to spoil okay so the thing you're about to say he considered a weapon and the most effective the most effective and successful weapon to combat such adversaries as hatred ignorance violence racism 
Uh -huh. Yeah, see, the map is, is working it. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. Verbatim. Verbatim. An answer? Explanation? <laughs> mm -hmm. We're learning about this, researching learning about this. Yes. Yeah. Inter, inter-race, inter-race relationships. Yeah, inter-race relations. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, just let me just give you one word that might help to illustrate, right? To illustrate, né? he he told a story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Stop there for a second. Okay. Well, first of all, congratulations. Because do you realize what's happening with you, with your memory? I mean, your memory in English? It's working better, right? You see, the, the more we do this, the more we repeat, we go back and we talk about it again. And, and, and do you feel... Because I, 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 I don't, I don't want to let my opinion influence you. I, I want to know your, your true feelings about this. But do you feel that that this is, is having an impact on your fluency? Do you feel that? It is right. Okay, because I think it's it, this is very positive. Okay, so I, the reason why I stopped here. It's because, just before you mentioned. He was 10 years old. Oh, when he, wa when he was 10 years old, blah, blah, blah. You were going to say something. Just, just before, just before, you were in doubt whether or not you should use past perfect, right? Yeah, you were, mm, had or, well, okay. And that's exactly the point of today's class, right? Because I know, uh, I've noticed over the, the last couple of classes, that there's no question about it. You are building the timeline in your mind as you speak more and more naturally. But every now and then, you, you, I notice that you feel a little bit lost. Is that right? You do, right? <laughs> okay, so guess what? Today, this morning, as I had breakfast, I watched Daryl Daves, and I caught him struggling between simple past and past perfect as well. Well, but he fixed it very fast. <laughs> it's almost difficult to, to pick it up, you know, the moment. But for us, you know, for us students of, of the language, it's so cool. 
because it shows us that even for a native speaker, they have to keep this in check, you know, as they speak. Okay, what am I talking about? Am I talking about a single event in the past? Or am I talking about something that somehow, because of, of context, you know, relates to another position in time, you know, in the past over the timeline? And Darrow did this very, I mean, beautifully. And, and from a didactic point of view, it's just perfect. Okay. And then before we go any further, because uh, this was a little test, I wanted to see how much you remember. And I'm very relaxed now because I, I, now I see <laughs> you remember a lot. Uh, I just want you to tell me a little bit about what happened in the bar where he worked. You know, the bar, the part that we covered last class. But before it slips my mind, because there are lots of things for us to talk about. Uh, I just want to refer to something you said earlier on. Uh, in the very beginning of your description, you said something about Daryl looking for an answer, an answer to that question, you know, the, the interracial relationships and understanding. And it's funny because when you did talk about that, you used the verb to spend and you used the verb to spend to talk about his life. And here's what I was trying, uh, I was waiting to tell you. Here's an opportunity for us to once again use past perfect. Because you see, his life is not over. Because, I mean, of course we know the guy, is, uh, at least we, we think he's alive because, you know, we're watching his video on YouTube. But un at least until the moment he shot that video, the guy's alive. But for anybody listening to us who didn't know that, they would think, well, but Veronica said that he spent his life. That would suggest the guy's dead. You know, the guy's dead. Okay, so if I'm talking about somebody, about someone who's in the room with me, sitting right here next to me, and I want to say something like this, oh, Veronica, today I want you to meet this guy because he's very special. And he's the one I was telling you who has spent his life you know, search for an an searching for an answer in this particular subject, con concerning this particular subject, right? Because it started in the past and it goes all the way to the present moment. And then we move to reporting. We are reporting that story. We watched the video last class and we don't know exactly when that video was shot, but let's say it was shot two years ago in 2017, for example. Well, what we know is that based on the story we learned last class, is that he had spent his life from the age of 10 until that day when he was on the stage telling us the story, he had, he had spent his life looking for an answer. Okay? Right. So then, watching this at home, I thought, oh, this is so cool. Because then I'm going to show Veronica the video. And today we're gonna we're, we're gonna uh, use this moment to investigate this structure a little bit more. But what are we gonna do? We're gonna keep a check. Okay, we're gonna keep a check on Daryl. In other words, we're gonna watch him talk. We're gonna watch him speak. And every time he uses simple past or pa past perfect, we're gonna make a little pause and then talk about it. Okay. Right. And then when we get to the point where he makes the mistake, we'll see if you if you if you notice to, if you pick it up because he fixes it he fixes it very quickly. Okay? So let, let me send you the link. One second. Actually I'm gonna play it here. Okay, I'm gonna play it here in the in the whereby. Okay. Um let's see. Here we go. And let's watch this together. Here it is.
Okay. So, something looks different there, right? It's the same guy. In fact, it's the same story, but it's a different stage, right? Because he, he has given this talk, right, more than once. And the introduction for this one is slightly different. Did you notice him using past perfect at any moment? Actually, he didn't. N not w not once in this entire uh, story, right? In this in in this entire description. Okay, tell me what you understood. Tell me what you remember. So he started the the talk by picking up a policeman's uniform, right? And what did you learn about that? I mean, wh wh what is that police uniform? Why was it there? What did he tell it, us? Mm -hmm. Police officer. Prison, 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 prison. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. His. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you do you remember anything about because this guy this I think his name was Robert White I'm not sure of the first name but his last name was White Okay now this guy received two sentences for crimes he were accused of Do you remember what the two crimes were Mhm mm with the shotgun, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. So these were the two crimes, right? Attempted murder of two black men. So he conspired, and uh, I'm not sure if the black men died, but apparently with the shotgun, he tried to kill them. So. He was convi convicted of, and, and the thing is, he was not accused because we know he went to prison. So actually he was convicted and he received two sentences, right? One for attempted mur murder and another one for uh, conspiring to bomb a synagogue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this guy was a police officer. He gave Daryl his uniform when he got out of prison, right? After serving his sentence. Okay. Uh, but there was something else about this guy. Because first there was the police uniform, right? What was the other thing that Daryl produced? Okay. Mm -hmm. To where? Mm -hmm. And what was it? So, uh, in the hierarchy of the clan, he was a state's, the state's, 
the state of Maryland's dragon, right? He was, his position in the clan, he, he held the position of a state dragon. That's why he wore that uniform. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, of course, we don't know yet how Daryl ended up possessing those two things, right? The, the police uniform and the clan's robe. We're going to learn that in a few minutes. Okay. Do you have any questions? No? Because you see, the, the, the thing is, you, you understood this, the, the story, the scene pretty well. You understood the origin of those things. You understood the sentences, the crimes the, the guy had been convicted for. Now we're going to learn other things. And, that, and then, as far as the English, the language, the structure goes, Daryl only used simple past. And as you watched it, okay, and as you listened to Daryl, uh, did you feel comfortable receiving this information in simple past only? Did it make sense to you? It did, right? Okay. But now, just before we advance, I just want to make a point here. So, it makes perfect sense because he is telling the story from the point of view, from a standpoint of someone who lived that story. Because even though uh, Robert White is just a guy, I mean, in, in the story he says it's a friend now, but he was telling uh, the story from his standpoint, right? But we are not there. We are here. It's like we're in the future. And we are trying to retell, we're trying to retell that story, the story Darrow told them. And then here comes the, the, the past perfect investigation that, that I want to do with you. Okay. So, he was there on the stage and he started his, he, he kind of opened his presentation or his lecture by showing up a police uniform, right? Okay, and then we could do something like this. Had he bought that, that uniform? No, he hadn't. So what was the origin of that uniform? Robert White? Had given it to, it to him. Because let's see if you agree with me. I'm trying to build the line with you. We are here. And we are talking about that moment on the stage. Now, did Robert White come on the stage and did he give it to him at that very moment? No, he didn't, right? The robe was already there. So it means that giving it to David, to, to Daryl, had to happen before. That's perfect. Okay. Now, let's explore another combination of, uh, of, uh, of sentences, right, and verbs. Let's use the verb to belong. So, if I ask you a question like this, at that very moment on the stage, right, who that police uniform, who that police uniform, who did it belong to? Well, you didn't answer my question, but I was going to go there anyway. But but that's great. No, 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 that's great because you, you, you travel a little bit further than, than, than me, okay? Because I actually asked you that day on the stage, who did the, the, the uniform belong to? Well, at that moment, it belonged. Yeah, but how do we say that with the verb to belong? It It belonged to Daryl, right? But where did it come from? Well, it had belonged to the police officer, to, to Robert White. Okay? Good. Why, um, 
why did that guy, right, get uh, a prison sentence? Okay, let's suppose we ask this question. Why did he get a prison sentence? This guy, Robert White, for example. Yes. You like the verb to accuse. Okay. <laughs> no, but that's fine. The way you use this is fine. Because he had been accused of... Well, you know, just to... Yes. Or using your structure, you could say he had been found guilty. He had been found guilty of... Murdering two black guys. Bombing. A synagogue. So you see my point. I'm just trying to, to, to build this up with you. Darrow is telling us a story. He's using past simple only. It doesn't hurt our ears. It makes perfect sense. Then, uh, we have to tell the story. And then all of a sudden... It doesn't sound right anymore because from our standpoint it's it's not past simple anymore it's a combination of past simple and, and, and past perfect okay right so let's go ahead because I want you I want you to see Darrow doing that as well okay just, just a second Oh, I'm sorry. I hate the <laughs> the ads. <laughs> One second. Oh my God. Okay, now I got with the right position the the starting point. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's just stop. I know that you know <laughs> it's the same story, right? Okay, but today we're looking at it, okay, with another focus. Did you notice the verb tenses? Uh, what I mean is this. In his telling of the story, right, what verb tense did he mainly use? Start with, he was born in Chicago in 1958. 
right? What did he say after that? You can jump to the parade if you want. It's not a problem. Were there many were, were, were there many black kids in his school in the in the Boy Scout, the Cub Scout? That simple past again. There were. Okay, keep going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you remember where where he lived? The place. Do you remember where he was? Because he was born in Chicago in 1958. But in 1968, where was he? Actually, uh, the name of the place he lived, the name of the place where he lived, was Belmont. Uh, Belmont, a suburb of Boston. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, they had a march, right? They had a parade. Mm -hmm. To Concord. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Down the street. At some point. Right. Uh huh. beautiful mistake because <laughs> no because it, that's what I want I want the mistakes for us to learn with them so look what you said you said he had been hit well you see he was carrying the American flag because we had I mean I just learned through you that at that moment, marching down the street, he, Daryl, one of two black kids, he was carrying an American flag. Okay? The, the picture is clear in my mind. But when you say he had been hit, so in my mind, I see the, the act of hitting happening sometime before. So, for example, this is the picture I built in my mind, okay? I, I, wa I want you to understand the picture I'm building as you deliver the goods, as you deliver the facts. So you said, oh, Fred, you see, he was marching down the street, but he had been hit. Oh, so probably he was bleeding. So you see, he was carrying the, the American flag, and at that moment he was crying or he was bleeding, but what was that? Well, that was the result of what you said. He had been hit. Maybe in the very beginning, or he had been hit by another boy before the parade started. I see that immediately in the past. The past of his past, right? Because we know the story is in the past. But I'm talking about another past. Simply because you used past perfect. Then my question is, is that really what you want to tell me? No. <laughs> okay. So, wait a second. So, let's understand what you're trying to say. So, what you're trying to say is that the hitting happened at that moment. Yes? The moment you were describing. 
then we use simple past. So you see, he was marching down the street, he was carrying the American flag, and then he started getting hit. Right? He started, notice the use of past simple, he started getting hit by soda cans, rocks, and debris. Right? And he was, he was very naive, right? And because he was very naive, did he understand what was going on? So wh what was his first thought? Wh wh what did he... Th Exactly, because he was very naive, right? Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. From the danger, right? So they kind of uh, escorted him out of that place. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, so what I said, what I have just said to you, in terms of building this timeline and trying to understand where the the facts are, do they make sense to you? Okay. Because now I want to give you another hint, another tip, another suggestion. I used to do this as when I was a student, and I still do this as a teacher. I, 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 I use this as, as a kind of practice. It helps me a lot, and it helps me to help my students, which is, even when you make a mistake, you know, we, I don't know, because of the way we were brought up, we were brought up at a time when um, we had to be tested all the time, you know, we went to school, we studied for four weeks, and then there was a test, and you you were supposed to pass the test. Every time you fail a test, you're dumb or you're not doing well, and so on. Which means that, in a way, our our educational system tends to stigmatize mistake. You know, there is a stigma to it. We think, oh my God, a, a mistake is something very bad. And, and do you remember just a few minutes ago when you made a mistake and I celebrated? <laughs> Sound, sounds very sarcastic, right? Why? <laughs> Why do you hate me? You don't even know me. <laughs> My point is, so for me, it's exactly the opposite. You know, I don't stigmatize mistakes. I think mistakes are tools. Tools that we can use to learn. And now I'm going to do that. I'm going to use your tool your mistake. So, for example, we have just said he was naive. He was naive. That's why he thought they didn't like the scouts. Isn't that right? Okay. But let's suppose for some reason in the process I get lost and I say, oh, he had been naive. Well, from a grammatical point of view, it's a, it's a valid sentence. It's possible to say he had been naive. But then we have to understand that being naive is in the past before the past. In other words, is before his past. So, let's create a context in which that sentence makes sense. Let's suppose that when he was carrying the flag and people were hitting him, now I'm telling a different story, okay? Let's suppose he realizes, oh my God, you know, my other black friends, they warned me not to join the white scouts. They told me this kind of thing was going to happen to me. I didn't listen to them. So what happened then? What can we say? Well, at that point, Daryl realized he had been naive. You see, he was not naive at that. Uh, he was not naive at that moment when he was being hit. 
He was naive before when he accepted an invitation to join a, a, a white Cub Scout, when he chose to neglect the fact that he was the only black kid. Does that make sense? Okay. Another thing. Imagine that you're saying, ah, okay, you see, and being very naive, he had thought. He had thought. Now, if you say that, it means that the thinking process, in other words, uh, m considering making some observations about a certain opinion, now this process happened even before the march. And, and then at that point, he was realizing something. And, well, but, you know, I thought about that, you know, so now I'm not surprised. So suppose this is the new story. That was happening to him, but he was not surprised. He didn't like what was happening to him. He didn't like the fact that people were, were hitting him and only him. That people were throwing things at him and only at him. And he was aware of that. And then at, at that moment, if he was reflecting, and, in, and today if he's telling a story, yeah, but you know, to be honest with you, I had thought about that. That's why I was not surprised. You see that past perfect in both of these cases, they're legitimate, they're, they're perfect, they make perfect sense. Okay. But we're not that, there yet because Daryl hasn't made the mistake yet. So, let's go back. Okay. So, now, let me paste this thing here. And let's go back and play 160 and set and watch together. Did you notice? No. <laughs> well, it's, it's very fast, but it's okay. So, tell me what you understood. I, I know it's a repetition of something you already know, okay? But so, the then mother, the troop leader, the path leader came, and they huddled over him, and then they escorted him out of danger, right? But did he ask them a question? Yes, he kept asking, but he, he, but they never answered. Listen to it again. Actually, I'm going to play the last part, then you can confirm that. And pay attention, see if you notice something else. One second. So, so did he ask them a question? Because he said he didn't understand. Mm 
Mm -hmm. But, okay, so they never explained to him. To him. So, even though he kept... Right. So we're talking at that at that moment, right? So they were around him. They escorted him out of danger. But they never explained to him, like, hey, Daryl, be quiet. You know, they're hitting you because of this and that. They never did that. But at that moment, did he ask them? Did he keep asking them why he was being hit? Yes, he kept asking. So even though he kept asking, they never answered to him. Notice that I'm not using past perfect because I'm talking about that moment, right? Okay. But then Daryl said this. What did I, what had I done wrong? What did I, what had I done wrong? Watch one more time. Okay. Did you see what happened? Okay, what was his first question? Do wrong. But he didn't finish, right? What did I... Then he went back and what... I done... Done wrong. Okay. Considering the timeline, does that make sense to you, what Darrow did, going from simple past to past perfect? Before, right? And, and that's it. That's the explanation. Because let's think about this. Let's just put the facts together over the timeline. Now, there was a moment when Daryl was protected by the den mother, the path leader, the troop leader, like three people, you know, around him. And let's say they had already escorted him out of danger. Let's suppose they had already, already taken him out of the parade. But they never said anything. They never explained to him. But he kept asking. So... He was asking them, so let's think about the moment when Daryl is asking them, what's going on? Why are they hitting me? Now, we know that this is in the past, but hitting him, is it not further down the road? In other words, on the timeline, isn't it an older past? And if we are to talk about that, shouldn't we use past perfect? That's what he did. He said, Why, what, had I, what had I done wrong? But even being a native speaker, right? Supposedly, a person who, who knows this or has a good command of structures like that, sometimes they get confused too. Okay. Does that mean anything to us? What lesson should we learn? I mean, how should we receive this? That nobody's perfect. <laughs> okay. But my point is, uh, from a student's point of view, isn't it comforting knowing that when we're learning more advanced, more sophisticated structures, to, to realize that native speakers sometimes struggle with the same thing we are struggling as learners of the second language. And isn't that good? I, I personally think it's good. Because, you know, it takes a little bit of the pressure. Because I think sometimes we forget that. Don't, don't you think that we forget that, that we have to learn these things and sometimes we might think, oh my God, 
maybe I'm not that smart because I am struggling with this. I, I don't remember when to use this. Well, guess what? We are looking at someone who has spent his life speaking this language, this language that we're trying to learn. And they struggle too. Okay? It's not a problem at all. Okay. So that was the thing I wanted to show you. Okay? I really wanted to show you this thing. And then, of course, I'm going to keep paying attention when we use. Uh, but I really wanted to share this with you. And now I'm going to play this uh, a part a little bit longer just for us to close this class with a little bit more of the story. Okay? So let me advance here. And there we go. Well, and wait a second, it seems that it didn't work. Let me try again. Okay, now it's going to work. Okay, that's new stuff, right? So we're going to close with this. So tell me what you understood. So we start with these parents, right? So as they were fixing him up, we know this from last class, they asked him how he had fallen and, and had gotten scraped up like that. So Darrow explained that he had not fallen down and told his parents exactly what had happened to him and for the first time explained
Good. Continue. Believe his parents. Form the question. Yes, they, they had never met him, right? They had never laid eyes on him. So how could they hate him? But other events, right, began to happen in his life, right? Mm-hmm. And then when that happened, he finally realized his parents. Or he finally realized, so he realized here that his parents had told him the truth because remember he initially had thought his parents had lied to him but then he finally realized they had told him the truth then he started reading books right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But did any of those books provide the answer? So, would join an organization uh huh. And what's like the Cuckoo's Clan, right? Because the purpose of th that organization is that to hate people just because they're different. Yes, yes, it was the, the woman, he even mentioned her name, Mary. So she, she was his secretary, the person who, who booked his bands, concerts and things, you know. So, mm-hmm. Wizard, yes, the Imperial Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hierar hierarchical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. called him made an appointment mm -hmm. to remember Daryl's instruction to his secretary
to not tell him right mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Actually, this wasn't a... Well, in the other video, we're going to learn in, in more detail who told him that, right? But for now, let's just say that we don't know the source, okay? But we know that Daryl had been warned, yeah? So, not exactly by Mary, but he had been warned not to fool around with Roger Kelly. He had been warned not to mess with that guy, not to kid around, because that guy would kill him. Mm -hmm. A motel. They reserved a room in a motel. Showed up, appeared. Mm -hmm. On the door. Mm -hmm. Bodyguard. Mm -hmm. Side arm, a side arm, mm -hmm. and that's what we know so far. Okay, so tomorrow we're going to learn how this interview is going to go. What do you think is going to happen? Yeah, using communication. <laughs> okay, so we'll find that out tomorrow. Okay, dear. Have a great morning. Thanks for coming. Oh, by the way, before we, we break up, just one question. Uh, do you feel that doing what we did today with the timeline, even though I didn't build anything, I didn't make any presentation, it was verbal, most of what we discussed. But we saw real-life examples, you know, of... First, the way we described the story, the way Daryl started using simple past, and then when we got to the point where he himself got a little bit confused, but but adjusted the sentence so by using past perfect to communicate that message more um, more accurately, right? So, did that help? I mean, uh, help in the sense that did that help you? make more sense of this structure and, and understand more clearly the logic of it. Okay, good. So next class, we're going to continue practicing with it. Okay, now having had this, this kind of, uh, um, it's like a, a, the, we're shining a light into a dark area, you know, we're making it m clearer, more visible and so on. Thanks again. Have a great day. See you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. And that was another online live class.